and then we're going to figure out the collections of receivables. So we're going to try to figure out how much cash we're receiving. For July, we're going to say that everything that we had in receivables, which we're assuming happened last month, June, is going to be collected the next month. That's the assumption that we are making. Some problems could have much more complex assumptions. They could assume that we're going to get so much this month and then so much the month after. And we'd have to figure out what the cash flow would be in relation to the sales we make on account. In this case, we're going to say that we received all of that in July. And then in August, we're going to receive everything that we sold on uh, in, in July. And then in September, we're going to receive everything we sold in August on account. That's the assumption we're making. Then we can figure out the cash flow for these months. Then we can add them up. This is the cash sales. This is what we received on account. We didn't make the sales this time. We got the sales from the last time. That's where we're getting our cash receipts. That's what we got this month. These are on account. There's our cash receipts and so on and so forth. And then we can use these numbers to plug into our cash budget. All right, so cash budget. We're going to start off with a cash balance that we started with. That's going to be the 40000 We're going to get that from the balance sheet from the prior period. So this is the balance sheet from the prior period. We had 40000 to begin with. So there's the 40000 And then we're going to add to that the cash receipts from customers. And, of course, we just calculated that. The cash receipts from customers in July was the 495 uh, that we just calculated. So there's that number. And there's our total cash receipts. So we got the 40 plus the 495 total cash receipts. Now we need to figure out the cash disbursements. That's usually the longer process. We're going to have to jump back to our prior budgets in order to calculate this out. So we start off with the payments for raw materials. Now this one we're actually going to get right from the balance sheet over here because we're going to make a similar assumption for the payments for raw materials, meaning we're going to pay for raw materials on account and we're making the assumption that uh, we we're going to pay for it and then I mean we're going to buy it on account and then pay for it next month that's going to be the assumption again we could have you know more simplified assumptions meaning we just pay for it this month or we can have more complex assumptions in some problems saying that we're going to pay the payable over a certain amount of time frame we're going to assume that in this problem that uh, anything that we buy in terms of material we buy it all on account the, in in the one month and then we pay it off next month therefore in the month of june we bought all the materials everything in accounts payable is for materials that we then pay off in july so that's why that number is going to go here so it's going to be one month off similar concept to what we had with the receivables then we're going to have the payments for direct labor we're going to bounce back to the direct labor budget here's the direct labor for july from step four of the budget and if we pull that number over there's that number here then we're going to go to the payments for variable overhead. Once again, we're going to jump back to our variable overhead budget that we have already calculated up in step five. And the variable overhead is here. So we're just taking the variable portion. You might be saying, why aren't we taking the total portion? Because the fixed portion in this case, I believe, was depreciation, not a cash item. Therefore, not on the cash budget. 